I like to think of the legacy media, the establishment media, the mainstream media, whatever you want to call them. I like to think of them as a grandfather. Grandpa had his time, he had a good life, but his days are dwindling and the end is upon us. Cable subscriptions are in free fall. The New York Times is selling the truth for 50% off. You may think Trump's approval rating is low, and it is, but it's still significantly higher than public trust in the media. Man, if I was losing to Trump in a trust contest, I'd be pissed off too, bigly. Believe me, I had this optimistic hope that grandpa would settle into a nice living community until his time comes and he would leave us peacefully. But that's not how this is gonna go. Instead, grandpa has gone crazy. He's gonna use any weapons he can to try to take us down with him. Get off my lawn. Such is the attitude behind this recent trend of media hit pieces against YouTubers. PewDiePie? Racist. John Tron? Racist. Even Colin Moriarty? He just made a tame joke about women. Racist. <sighs> Fine. The old saying goes, if you can't beat them, join them. I guess now it's, if you can't beat them, call them racist. And if you still can't beat them, well, call them racist again. This is a trend. Alternative media, independent media, DIY duct tape productions like this one, these are all on the bounty list for old man establishment. And he will do everything he can to delegitimize us with his dwindling influence and days. The latest example to catch my eye is this article recently published by Vice. Why the right is dominating YouTube, which as pictured starts out as a smear of Paul Joseph Watson, but develops into a theory piece that is flawed in its premise. And so its reasoning has nowhere to go but down. Just like Vice.com's traffic trajectory. I'll skip the hit on Paul. It's just lazy tweet aggregation veiled as journalism, which is another unfortunate habit Grandpa has. Paul Joseph Watson put out a tweet saying Twitter is a left-wing echo chamber, which was immediately and widely mocked. The evidence for that claim being two replies from two randos tweeting normie memes. But that is the full extent of our author's research. I'm not kidding, that is as factual as this article gets. And so without further ado, I welcome you to fantasy land. Paul Joseph Watson's tweet offers a sketch of the social media terrain that seems spot on. Twitter isn't wholly dominated by the left, but left-wing views are certainly better represented there than any other major social network. On YouTube, by contrast, left-wing voices are seemingly non-existent, apart from that communist child, while right-wing voices dominate. I honestly don't know who this author is referencing when he says that communist child, but here is what I mean when I say this article is bogus in its premise. Left-wing voices are seemingly non-existent on YouTube. Here's a chart of monthly view counts of various political discussion channels. The channels this author complains about, Alex Jones and Paul Joseph Watson, those are right here. Prominent conservatives like Steven Crowder, Milo, Mark Dice, Rebel Media, those are here. Moderate voices like Dave Rubin, Philly D, Joe Rogan, there you go. So what's at the top of this chart? The Young Turks, Vox, Casey Neistat, the guy who insists that you vote for Hillary, and yes, ironically, this author's own Vice. I must acknowledge the trend is generally up for conservative voices and generally down for left-wing voices. The Young Turks monthly view counts have dropped significantly over the last year, but at least at present, YouTube politics is still the Young Turks and then everybody else. Left-wing channels are seemingly non-existent on YouTube in the same way steroids are seemingly non-existent on the home run record list. That's only if you ignore the top. If the premise for this article is bunk, there's probably no reason to read the rest, other than for entertainment. But lucky for you, Russell Crowe, I am in the mood. Are you not entertained? Our author continues by ripping this medium from high atop his pretentious palace. The videos these people produce are a lot of things. Amateurish and mind-numbingly tedious are among the main descriptors I'd use. But somehow, they're incredibly effective. Let's face it, anyone who can get hundreds of thousands of views for a one-hour rant about Owen Jones presume he's referring to Sargon there, is worthy of at least our anthropological interest, if not quite our respect. This rag is to water what this article 
is to smug. Dripping everywhere. I can't dry it out. My, my, those videos are so amateur, yet for some reason, people enjoy them. Mm, indeed, but we can't concern ourselves with the pleasures of the peasantry. That's only worthy of our anthropological examination. After all, look how academic we are. I've never thought an article could be punchable. This is such a punchable article. <laughs> the most famous instance of far-right views being disseminated on YouTube is PewDiePie, the site's biggest star, commanding an audience of literally millions of impressionable teenage boys who for some reason want to watch him play computer games. He was dropped by Disney after it emerged that his videos included anti-Semitic jokes and Nazi imagery. First, let's acknowledge this author supports his claim that PewDiePie pushes far-right views by mentioning his anti-Semitic jokes. PewDiePie's views are evident by the jokes he makes. Well, by that reasoning, is this a pro-pedophilia manifesto from Louis C.K.? When you consider the risk in being a child molester, there is no worse life available to a human than being a caught child molester. And yet they still do it! Which from, you can only really surmise that it must be really good. I mean, from their point of view. Second, that pompous dismissal in saying, well, he's got an audience of millions who, for some reason, find him entertaining. Maybe he is entertaining, and that is why he has an audience as large as he does. Generally, you don't become a self-made millionaire by accident. Here's my hypothesis. Twitter is the natural home of the left because Twitter participatory open, capable of presenting multiple viewpoints to the reader simultaneously, is well suited to the expression of left-wing views which are to draw however loose a family resemblance between often disparate warring factions, typically somehow egalitarian. Contemporary right-wing politics, by contrast, is driven largely by the unexamined prejudices and anxieties of primarily white men. Any white man who wants to hold on to their prejudices and anxieties is going to have a tough time of it on Twitter, but they're going to have a grand old time standing in front of their wall alone ranting. <laughs> Alternative hypothesis. Twitter is the natural home of the left because dissenting views are treated as harassment and the rules of engagement are enforced with political preference rather than neutrality. It's the natural home of the left because the battle of ideas is decided not through competition, but through the will of the iron fist. Conservative and libertarian ideas do better on YouTube because while imperfect, YouTube is much less censorious than Twitter. And as you put it, for some reason, people who are entertaining or thought-provoking or just plain persuasive tend to win out. So what can the left do? Calls for, say, a Paul Joseph Watson of the left are bound to be misguided. The left can never appropriate the solo rant to camera. It is an inherently authoritarian method of communication. But if the future is video, then the left desperately need to find a way to use it. The question is whether the medium can be used in an open, diverse, participatory way. How the hell is speaking into a camera inherently authoritarian? Isn't it the exact same thing you're doing with this article, compiling your thoughts by yourself and then distributing them publicly for consumption? And what about all the people of your persuasion who do utilize this medium? All white people are racist. Are the terms cracker, white trash, and redneck racist? Hmm, I wonder who came up with these phrases. I'm fucking better than you, okay? Much better than you. You are garbage. Huh. Okay, well, maybe you've got a point there. I can't emphasize enough how much I disagree with this author in his two ideas that YouTube is non-inclusive, non-participatory, lonely, whatever, and also that YouTube is inherently authoritarian. To the first point, show me one medium that is more engaged with the audience and with other creators than YouTube. YouTube videos are filled with sometimes 
thousands of comments and YouTubers get stacks and stacks of emails and tweets and other messages and many YouTubers reply to them all. If two YouTubers have a disagreement, they often hop on a stream together and they discuss and they debate and there are live viewers who are interacting with them and among each other. How is a TV channel like CNN or an article like this Vice one more participatory or more inclusive than that? And Vice.com doesn't even allow comments. And you're somehow gonna claim the participation trophy? And to the point that YouTube is inherently authoritarian, let me tell you, I have never had any academic or professional pursuit in my life that is more free than this one is. YouTube is pretty close to an entirely free intellectual market. Good stuff tends to rise, bad stuff tends not to. And let me tell you from personal experience, the biggest bumps I have had in my channel's history have come when I am producing my very best work. And that's the thrill of it. I rise or I fall on my own talent or merit alone. Not because of some previously constructed plan or some arbitrary authoritative decision making about what's quote unquote fair. And all the people I enjoy watching are part of that same competition. They are rising on the basis of their merit. And by the way, they are a true rainbow squad of reason and truth. They are people of color. They are women. They are gay. They are transgender, but that's not what matters. What matters is the people who influence me and who challenge me and who persuade me are all wonderfully gifted thinkers and communicators, and they are all truly free in constructing their messages. There is nothing authoritarian about this exchange and battle of ideas, and that is why I have never been more academically fulfilled, more professionally fulfilled, more intellectually fulfilled, more personally fulfilled than I am on this camera and on this mic, compiling my ideas that for some reason people enjoy listening to. To the author of this article, if you're looking to use YouTube in an open, diverse, participatory way, as you say you are, let's do a stream. And I mean that in good faith. I want to discuss these ideas with fair pushback and really search for some truth and common ground. We share that goal, or at least you claim to. My door is always open. And for some reason, I've got an audience that genuinely would like to hear a discussion. Thanks as always for listening and for supporting this channel. Always appreciate that thoughtful discussion down below and especially over on Twitter. That is at ML Christensen. You're always welcome to come hang out and chat in my live streams. Those are linked down in the description. Looking forward to it. Okay, bye.